Good morning. What a joy to be in the house of the Lord. We praise God because he's good and his mercy endures forever. We thank God for uh, life. We thank God for this country, for America. Part of my life I've been living here, half of my life in America, so I, I feel I am part of this country. And I am so thank God for it that he brought me here from Guatemala to America. So I feel like I am American as well. We honor this country. We thank this country. Only, not only because God blessed this country, but this country is a country of opportunities. You can be someone in here. If you are nobody, you can be somebody here. If, if you really want to, you can be somebody. But we are celebrating the 4th of July, and uh, we thank God for this country. It's, it's no words to describe how grateful we are. So it's a pleasure to uh, bring this message to you this morning. But I want to uh, thank everybody, the ones uh, uh, streaming. Uh, we want to thank you. Uh, we want to thank uh, our family members, I believe, from Guatemala. They are, are watching. Uh, gracias por ver. We thank you. So the name of the message is what we're going. Is what God is placing in the heart of the pastors of this congregation. Is what we see in the natural. We are rebuilding the building in the natural. But, so God bring me the word and the supernatural we need, things that we need to be rebuilt as well. As our spirit and need to be rebuilt. So this is why I have this message. But let me review a little bit what uh, Pastor Lou preached last week. Um, in uh, the message of... Last week is the qualifications to be a messenger for God. You don't have to be a great theology, it's important. You don't have to be a college, that you have to go to college to bring a message to your people. You have to be a worshiper. And according to the, the, the message, if we want to be the messenger of God, we have to be a worshiper. And I believe with all my heart, if you want to be used by God, we have to be a servant. That's the qualifications. Worshiper and servant, they go together. And I believe that in this hour, God is looking for a, many people. And I know that in this congregation, is that many people have called in their lives, have the qualifications, and no matter how old are you, and no matter the age, God is willingly to use you. And we praise God. So we see that God used Moses in the past. He used Joshua to bring the people to the promised land. And from there, we have Solomon. Solomon built the temple for God. He rebuilt the temple with excellence. If we, that's a different message, but I'm going with a little details with that. God used Moses. He's the king of Israel. And Moses built this, the temple in the natural with such a details that... Uh, Back in the day, it, 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 they don't have what we have these days. But Moses, I um, mean, King Solomon, heard the word of the Lord and he obeyed and he built the temple of God. So that's what God is calling us. It's great Christian fellowship. We have to build the altars one more time. Salem, Massachusetts need to build 
the temple one more time. The citywide church of Salem, Massachusetts, and need to rebuild the temple one more time. We, have, we are looking for a new message. I don't, I don't bring you a new message. We have the message already. So let me uh, start it with the prophet Haggai. We know that God use, always used people to bring the message. And we know that God will always put the word on the, in the mouth of men. So in this hour, the message is rebuild our temple one more time. If you are not work, walking right with God, today is your time that you, you will rebuild your relationship with God. It's important. We don't know what the future is bringing us, but I know that you, if you have a relationship with God, that's what he's looking for. So if we started erring um, with a Hey Guy 1-1, one, one, this is the introduction, and from here we uh, will build the message. Hey Guy 1-1. One, one. In the second year of the King Darius, in the sixth month of the first day of the month, the word of the Lord came by Haggai the prophet to Zerubbabel, the son of Shel Sheliel, governor of Judah, and to Joshua, the son of. So in the second year, we know the Israel was taken by the Babylonians for 70 years. But what is speak that to our life? It looked like Salem had been 70 years captive by Babylon. We don't, we don't see what we shall see. We want to see miracles. We want to see healing. We want to see deliverance. We want to see the, the souls be saved. But it's, it's a little time. It's coming. It has been prophesied that it's coming in the last 10 years. We will see the move of God like never before. It has been prophesied many times. And I believe that the word of God is true. And I believe that the move of God will come to Salem, Massachusetts one more time. I remember many missionaries come from Salem to all over the world. Many come to uh, my country, what am I like? What's a little boy when I remember the American people go over there and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. It, it was a, a, a breakthrough in Guatemala. It was a, a revival in Guatemala when I was a young boy. We see many souls coming to know the Lord. We see they plant churches everywhere, but now, I see it's like a dry, dry land one more time. That they go on in the ways that they back the day was back in the days. But that's okay. God is dealing with people. God is dealing with us. In the second year, Darius, the prophecy of Haggai, the several specifications, and the making points here, we learn that the prophecy began. This makes Haggai the fierce among the uh, uh, minor prophets. So we don't mention that many uh, uh, the 12 small prophets because we always looking for the big guys. We wanted the big guys and we listen to the big guys, but we don't listen to the small prophets. So the, the prophet Haggai was calling to the nation of Israel one more time to bring to God one more time. God is calling us in this timing and in this hour. It's not Haggai that is speaking here, it's me, but that's okay. God placed me here in Salem, Massachusetts for such a time as this, and I believe with all my heart that he placed me in this place to deliver his word. He placed me in this congregation because there's many over there, I can be over there, but no, he placed me in here because he wants me to speak. We know that the God used men to speak his word. 
He can send an angel, but he always uses the pastors. So when the pastors are preaching in here, we have to listen. It doesn't matter if it's not a message that, oh, this message is no blasphemy. It's not about blessing us the message. It's about hearing the word of the Lord. And I like to go Ezra 6.15. Now the temple was finished. So before I got there, they constructed the temple. They started building the temple for God again. But for some reason, they stopped building the temple. But the here, in Ezra 6.15, now the temple was finished on the third day of the month of, of Adar, which was in the sixth year of the reigning of the King Darius. We notice that the days, these days, were, in these days, the kingdom was taken by a pagan king. So it, it, it was, like a stop, like a hole, they stopped building, rebuilding the temple of God. But the word of the, the word of the God come back to Haggai one more time, the prophet. And in the difficult years of the return from the exile, God spoke to his people through the prophet Haggai again. And he's mentioned in the book of Ezra. I be staying in Ezra in Haggai, these, these two scriptures. I'm going to Ezra 5, 1 and 2. Then the prophet Haggai and Zechariah, the son of Edu, prophets, prophesied to the Jewish who were in Judah and in Jerusalem in the name of the God of Israel who is over, over them. So the elders of the, the, of the Jews built the temple. They prospered to the prophecy of the Haggai, the prophet, and Zechariah. They, they built the temple. According to the commandment of the God of Israel and according to the commandment of Cyrus and the, and the king of Persia. And it's the second point that I want to take. So they, they build the temple, but then the excuses coming, a lot of excuses, why we sure don't build the temple. Sometimes they're going through our lives as well. We make excuses, it's time to come to church and we don't come to church. Or sometimes um, we have a busy schedule. I know that we have family, uh, situations and we can don't come to uh, services or, or we walk away from God for a little bit is the same the same thing that the Jewish people he, uh, do here they make an excuses why why we should not rebuild a temple it's many factors I know that sometimes sickness coming in our life I know that they sometimes um, the doctors give a bad report, so we walk away from the house of the Lord a little bit. So it's an excuse in, in our lives. And then here we see the, the people was making excuses. Oh, God says, uh, the Lord of hosts saying, these people say the time it has not come. The, the Lord's house shall be built. The time has not come yet. Haggai have give this first word that the exiles have been back in Jerusalem. The work started gloriously. So they started rebuilding the temple one more time. So the work started start gloriously. That, 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 that is happening in our lives. We, we be saved. Then touch, God touches our heart. We 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 are filled with the Holy Spirit, and we go exciting. We prophesy. We worship God. That's the same way that they did here. 
The, the work started gloriously when the builders laid the foundation of the temple and the Lord, the priests stood in there, appeared with trumpets and the Levites and the Psalms of Asapha with symbols to praise the Lord according to the or ordinance of Dave, king of Israel. And they sang responsibility, praising and giving thanks to the Lord. They, they sing this, for he is good, his mercy endures forever. Toward Israel, to all the people, shout with a great shout when they praise the Lord, because the foundation of the house of the Lord was laid. Wow. That was a glorious. And I believe that that glorious time is coming back again. That's our vision on Wednesday night. We don't have no agenda on Wednesday night. We try everything and we do everything. But now God is calling us to come back Wednesday night with an open heart, with an open mind, to praise Him, to pray Him, to worship Him. It be the glorious time. It's coming back again. I believe that with all my heart. If we want to see the move of God in our family members, if we want to see the move of God in our work site, if we want to see the move of God in this congregation, we come together in unity. That's the vision for Salem, unity. The unity, that's the key word for this entire North Shore region. If we are disjoint, we can. See, my body can don't work alone. My, my body needs my hands. My body needs my feet. So all of you is important to this congregation. All of us are important. And no matter what title you have, you are important to be a part of this move of God that is coming back again. Give it a little time, a, a will, because he's looking for somebody. He's looking for you and I to come to his house and praise him and worship him. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. So it, after 70 years of neglect, the work was hard. He, he, you don't feel like in, in the middle of the week it's too hard to come to services? I don't know about you, but it's hard for me. I work 10, 12 hours, and after I'm working, I'm like, my couch is calling me. My popcorn is calling me. I want to watch TV and drink some soda. It's so hard to come into the house of the Lord. Why? Why is it so hard? I don't know. But through that hardness, we press through. Yes. We push through. We come through, and we come here and praising God. Amen. Don't take my word. If we believe for revival, we have to revive our, our own self. I, I revival my own, own self every, every day because I need to, because I wanted to, and I want to be a part of what God, what, the purpose of God for this area, for the North Shore region. They didn't have a lot of money of men power and the and this time they don't have many men power when solomon was building the temple he he hired a thousands of people a thousands of people come and build the house of the lord in the days of, of king solomon and these days they don't have much but they, they build the build the building Because they, they had great obstacles, the work of God, the people began to r r recognize and decide that it wasn't time to rebuild after all. It is too hard. Evident God wasn't, wasn't want us to uh, anytime soon to build the temple. They might say it was no time to come because they thought that 70 years of captivity 
mentioned in Jeremiah had not been fulfilled according to a Asher chronology. So what is our excuse these days? I don't know. <laughs> That's in between us and God. This message it shall be for the city, the city church. This message is in general for everybody. It's not only for the ones that are here. This message is for the ones that are watching for the streaming. This message is for the ones up there. This, this, this nation was building on the word of God. For some, for some reason, many, maybe because they have many blessings, they walk away from God. But God is not done with America yet. God is not done with Salem, Massachusetts yet. He will bring this back to him because that's what he does. That's what he did with me. I, one time I make a covenant with God and I say, God, if you let me come to America, I will serve you. <laughs> and that not happen. I walk away for 15, 10 years maybe. Nothing to do with God. But through many difficulties in life, to many challenges in marriage, he bring me because he gave me the leash. And that's what he does with his people. He gives the leash. Okay, you think you can do things without me? Go ahead and do it. Try it. He will, he will bring the one more time to this nation, to his feet. It's okay what we see in the natural. God having the control. He is in the control. Point three that I want to talk about. Haggai exposes their wrong priorities. The word of the Lord come by Haggai, the prophet saying, it is time for you yourselves to the well and your pen house, pen houses and this temple to lay in ruins. So the people, uh, the, the nation of Israel, they concentrate to build their own house. This nation, uh, it was doing their own thing. They forget the, the work of God. They forget about the temple of God. But in that a little time, the word of the, of the Lord come. God saw the hearts, the excuses, the poor priorities, and he has something to say to them through Haggai the prophet. This book is so fascinating. It's only two pages, but have a lot of material for us that we can learn from this book. It is time for you, you yourselves to the well in, in your penthouses. The, the people say that it wasn't time to rebuild the temple, but their actions say that it was time to live nicely in our own house. But if we see Solomon, Solomon built his house, but he built the house of the Lord first, then he concentrated in his own house after, but he put God first. It's time, church, it's time to be serious with God. God is speaking to us. It's time to get honest. It's time to get real with God. It's time to rebuild the altar. Let's come together. Let's have the same vision. We want to see miracles. Come here. Let's, let's do it together. Let's do it together. Let's do it in unity. Without unity, we can. I can do my own self. I can have services at home, but I be this talking to myself. <laughs> but when we, when we all come together, you know how powerful it is when we all come together. Pray, praise God. That we see the move of God today, how he moved today. I don't know if you... If, if, you, if you censor the same day I censored, but the worship today was unbelievable. I thank God for that. I thank the worship team for that. I thank you for all that. Because without us, that's what God is looking for, worshiping people. So let's come together. 
Let's come together and praise and worship God. It, that's the real key that God will use you beyond our own knowledge. Praise, praise Lord, praise the Lord. The altar is there. We can at least sacrifice to the Lord what we get and buy. So the altar is open. The altar is available for us. It's except to us if we want it to. If we want the altar, they're available for you. They're available, available for us. The excuses sound familiar, but God saw through them the days of Haggai. And he sees through the sim similar excuses today. The prophet Haggai, Haggai was like in the alarm clock, unlocking, but ne necessary. We need to hear this word. We need to hear. God had to bring conviction to us. Is is a message that many don't like it. It's a message that we don't like it, but we have to preach it. If we don't, if we don't speak the the message of God, who will be speaking for us? If we don't want, it, if we don't want to do it, the donkeys will do it. He's using this donkey right now. The donkey will speak to you. It happened back in the days. The people don't want to speak. The donkey speak to them. I like to go to Hey Guy Fi. I'm giving you a lot of work. I'm sorry, honey. <laughs> Fi. One Fi. Sorry, one Fi. One Fi. If you don't have it, I, I read it. Now, therefore, says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. This word God gave it to me last Saturday, consider your ways. Oh, where I go with this? Consider our ways. That even speak to me. That's time to reflection. Consider our ways. How we do ministry in our own congregation. Consider our ways, how we do serve God, we serve God with excellence. He said twice, consider your ways. If you go to Haggai 7, consider our ways. It's time to reflection. This have a second in Think, consider your ways. To say the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Twice. He's, he was bringing the attention to the people. Consider your ways, people. What you put first? Consider your ways. Are you putting your husband first? Are you putting your wife first? Are you putting your children first and neglect the house of God? Are you put work first? Consider your ways. What we put first. Amen. Consider our ways when we come to the house of the Lord. What, we, what, heart, what attitudes we bring to the house of the Lord. Consider your ways that we have reverence, reverence to the house of the Lord. Consider your ways how, how we praise in the Lord. Consider our, your ways, the Hebrews figure of the speech. And these Pharisees literally put your heart on your rose. 
Haggai asked God people to consider what direction their life was headed and if they really wanted to continue in that way. That's my question for all the Christians in general, in general out there, in general. I, that's my question to all over the world. Are you want to continue and be the same way that we always been? It has to be changes in our life. We must change our attitudes. We must change the way that we all always been. Go, let's go a little more beyond that we always, always done things. Oh, brother, what you saying? I'm so comfortable. I'm, I like to be comfortable too, but I like to be uncomfortable as well, because that's what God wants from us, to be uncomfortable people. We know that we are peculiar people, and that's the beauty about it, that we all know all the same, that we are peculiar people, but consider our ways today. Let's ask God about it. He hopes to change our ways. Can we go to Haggai hey 7 to 8? Hallelujah. We praise you, Jesus, because you are good and your mercy endures forever. We thank you, Jesus, because without you, we can don't do anything. If you don't have it, I will find it. Okay, so hey guy, seven say, do the say the Lord of hosts consider your ways? In verse eight, go up to the mountains and bring your will and build a house and I will take pleasure on it and I will be glorified, say the Lord. That's what he is looking for us right now. Are you bring your wood when you come to the house of the Lord? Are you have your wood when you are in your house and nobody else is with you? Are we have a wood when nobody is seeing, but God is seeing what we're doing? Are we have a wood when we're coming together? It's okay to reflect on the word of God. This is not rebuking for nobody. This is even a message for my own self. I'm even preaching to my own self because I need it. So, Salem City White Church, consider your ways. Therefore, the people of Israel were being judged and they didn't even know it. They probably wrote it all off as bad and taught the economic times, the tough economic times. But God was trying to tell them something. God is telling to us something. We know that we face it difficult. The economy is not that great right now, but that's okay. We don't have to live by the economy, what they, they say of the economy. I know that we believe in God and he will provide for us. Sometimes our priorities are out of order and we seem to suffer financial hardships that we many go through, but that's okay. That's in the natural. And God saying, you drinking, but you are not filled with drink. All our priorities are wrong. Priorities are wrong. Nothing will satisfy us. Each accomplishment soon reveals that 
there must be something more, something that can really satisfy us, fill us, the God in our lives except putting him first. If we put him first, everything comes to you. Amen. If you put him first, it no matter how you pack it look like today, it will be full tomorrow if we pull God first. In the spiritual, we can come to church and not yet satisfy. Because sometimes we preach the message they don't bless everybody. Sometimes we preach the, the message they no. No is no for everybody. Oh, it don't bless me today. I'm not satisfied. But my question is this, what you bring to the house of God is our responsibilities. I don't see new, no new believers. If you are a new believer, I understand. But I'm not talking about the new believers. I'm talking about those that are working with God 10, 15, 20 years. What we bring to the house of the Lord, you no, know, we do this one corporately. I don't know we do this together. If we, if we come in with the fire in our hearts, we see revival in our hearts. We can bless one another. You bless me, I bless you. Do they say the Lord of hosts, consider your ways, go to the mountains and bring wood. Let's bring the wood, O oh Lord. That's my prayer. Lord, help me to bring that good when I come to your temple, when I come into your house, so we can experience your power one more time. So we can walk with power. So when we pray for somebody, they will be healed. When we minister to somebody, we have words that can minister to the people. Hope, God hopes to bring that word to your house one more time. We look for much, but indeed it comes too little. When God has neglect, was neglected, nothing worked right. They were able to accomplish some things like building their own houses. We see the, the, the gospel, they go around, bless me, Lord, my house, if I have a thousand members, that's the gospel, they, are we doing good? That's not the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's not what God calls us to be a, a house built of souls. That, that's what we wanted to. Who don't want it, his church be full of, of members? But that's not the gospel that they are preaching. They are too comfortable over there. Blessings, blessings, blessings. Of course, God bless his people because he is a good God and he will bless us. But the prosperity message that is going over there, that is not what God is looking for. What is God is looking for us to be in our knees. The way that we have the vision for this house on Wednesday night. Come and be on our knees and call unto the Lord our host. Call unto the Lord El Dios Guerrero. This is not thanks, this is in Spanish. The, the God of host. The one who fight for us. The, God, the one to work through us. That, that's the vision for this house. Rebuild the temple one more time. Every, I, I know there are every challenges, but that's okay. Let's forget the challenges. If it's three or, three or four, God dwells well in his people. So it be, it be three or many or too many of a thousand here, it be okay that we be coming with one heart and one mind calling into God. We will be, bring that good together and we will worship the Lord. That's his calling us to do. 
and we'll be obeying. For I call for a drought on the land, we coming with Im image, image the people of God, depressing and discouraged because of drought, they throw to, it was all the attack of the enemy. And they pray fervently against it. When they say it was the enemy, they, it was, we blame everything in the enemy. And sometimes I, I, I like the one thing when Pastor Paul say, we blame everything in the enemy, but sometimes the enemy is not there. We, you know, we blame the enemy if we don't come to the church. Oh no, that's the, that's the enemy, don't want me to go to church. No, everything is from the enemy. Sometimes it's our flesh. It's our flesh. They don't want us to come together and praise the Lord. It's our flesh. They don't let us come in here. I understand we have small children. So I have children and I know what it is to have children. But let's bring the children too because God can touch the children in there. I remember my mother take me to, his, to her church when I was a young boy, six years of age. And I believe and I never forget that time when something is coming in my heart and I go in there and I stay in there. So I know when you bring your children in here that God will touch your children and it no matter if they go in different direction when in, in the youth, but God has the mark on them in the heart and he will bring your children one more time to his house in the good way and the bad way and not so matter, but he will bring your children to his house one more time. I never forget that day. Never. I was a young man when I feel the mark in my heart. And from that time, I never was the same. Even though I'm, I don't walk in the ways of the Lord. But God touched me. God will touch our family members one more time. That's a cry of our hearts. We have many family members that they don't know the Lord. But if we bring the world together, that things can happen. If we bring ourselves as a living sacrifice, God the world and his people. I was smelling the food yesterday. Wow, it smells so good. Oh, it's not because I'm hungry. Is it, is it, so, God speak to me. You know when we worship together, all the ancients coming together, is the smoke that coming through our prayers. When we are not looking to the right or to the left, when we are not looking who is looking, they even know the one, your neighbor is looking like, what's wrong with these uh, people that are crazy beyond. And not so matter, we don't put attention to that. We praise God and all the smoke they coming out. God the well in that. He is looking up there and say, that's my church. That's my people. I want to be well with them. I want to supper with them. Oh, we praise you, God. And I want... Uh, uh, can you put uh, Haggai 112? I'm almost there. Oh Lord, we thank you. Okay, I have it for you. Hey, guy, 112. Then Zerubbabel, 
the son of Shelial, and Joshua, the son of yes, Josedek, the high priest, with all the remains of the people, obeyed the voice of the Lord their God. And the words of Haggai, the prophet, is the Lord their God has sent him, and the people did fear before the Lord. That's the whole message right here. Let's obey the word of the Lord. Let's fear him one more time. Let's come here together. Then Serubabel and Joshua, with all the remains of the people, obey the voice of the Lord. Obedience had to be begun. Obedience had to be begun with us. I'm not forcing you to come to services. That's in between you and God. I'm just challenging you. I'm, I'm challenging you for those of there too. And uh, para ti que estás viendo la televisión si, uh, la, uh, uh, en la línea, si tú no estás caminando con Dios, esto es para, este mensaje es para ti también. Dios te está llamando que le hagas caso a, a Dios. God is uh, calling you to obey Him one more time. For the word of, of God is not distinguished from the words of the prophet. Is the they thought the prophet had added anything on his own. I'm not adding my own words in here. I just feel the anointing that I have to speak this to you. I just feel the anointing that I have to deliver this word to you. I don't want to walk, talk in my own. I depend on God. My dependency is on Him. The same thing that the words of Hey, hey Guy, the prophet, is the, the Lord that God has sent Him. The, the Lord used Him and sent Him to deliver that word to the, His people. He's using men and women in this time to deliver the word of God in these days. Hallelujah. Can we uh, read Haggai 2, 13 to 15? And Haggai says, if, if one who is unclean because of the dead body touches any of those, will it be unclean? So the priest answered and said, it shall be unclean. Hallelujah. We know that we face, that we are not perfect in this earth. We know that we commit sin every day. And it's the sin that separates in between man and God. But we thank the Lord Jesus Christ that he bring this together. And no matter if we fail today, we ask for repentance and forgiveness and God will lift it up again. He said, son, I don't remember you saying no more. It's the enemy that, that, that will remember you past. It's the enemy that will remember what you said yesterday. It's the enemy is the one that will be tickled your ears. Oh, you're no good enough and God don't, don't, don't be use you because you sent we all sinners. We sin every moment. I, I don't want to operate out there. I want to operate down here. This is real. I sin every day. But the Bible say repent seven times seven. So that means it's infinity of repentance. We ask God for forgiveness of our sins. And God is faithful and just to forgive us. And God said this to his people, I am with you. He said this to the nation of Israel when he brought them to the desert. He said, people, don't be fear, I am with you. He's telling us today, God is with us. People, don't be fear. 
I am with you. And he, I believe that he is with us. And we praise God for that. He encouraged us. He strengthened us. And he's calling us to do his work. And he's always empowering us. When he, we feel weak, he empowers his people. He empowers you. The one who feels weak today, God will empower you. We thank God for his encouragement. Then, hi, guy. The Lord messenger spoke the Lord's message to the people saying, I am with you, says the Lord. So the Lord stirred up the spirit in Zerubbabel, the son of Sheliel, governor of Judah, and the spirit of Yahshua, the son of Jehoshadak, the high priest, and the spirit of all the, rem the remnant of the people. The, the remnant people. The, and no matter what, and no matter if it's zero degrees of, outside, and no matter if it's a hundred degrees outside, the remnant people, God always used these people. And God is with his people. And God is with us. These remnant people here right now, God is willingly to use you. This is given a time. He will use you because he is not looking if you are a man or a woman. He is not looking if you are children, young, old, no matter what age you are, he will use you. Amen. Let's bring the wood together and he will use us corporally. He will. When I first began in this church, it was so powerful. I feel the power of God, and for some reason, it go down a little bit. But that's okay. This is why it's calling us to bring the wood one more time. Because together we can bring a wood together, and we will go back again with operating with that dimension, operating in the spirit one more time. When we see back in the days, we will, God will. God will use this one more time. He's not done with us yet. It, don't despise what we see with our natural eyes. Don't despise what we see in this ministry. Don't, don't say, oh, God, we don't use this, this ministry one more time. One time we see the healing power flow from many brothers and sisters, and it will come back again. It will come back again, but we have to bring our will together. I don't stop saying this. It will, because we, we, without us in here, it, it be this a building without his people. It be this a, a building that one time had power, but with you here, we can do it together. And I believe, I believe that with all my heart. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, for what you're doing. So the main points are, I'm finished with this. I'm finished with Titus 2.11. Do you have that? I know I, I, I talk about sin. Sin is the big one. Oh, brother, what you're saying, but we have the grace. The grace, they overtake everything. That's true. The grace overtake all, all our sin. But we have to have respons be responsible for our own actions as well. I like this description. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. We thank God for the grace, and we thank God the, he will forgive all our sins. So the main points are is this. This is, this, this is the message. Let's get serious with God one more time. 
despising the difficulties that we have. Let's build an altar for God one more time. Let's bring that journey with God one more time. Let's be honest and real with God one more time. And by the grace of God, he will use us one more time. If, you don't, if we don't take, because I talk too much, take this, these things. I repeat it again. If everything that I say, you don't was able to retain, take this one, two, three, four points that I already say. Take it to the heart. You don't have to listen to me. I'm nobody. I'm this the man. I'm this the one that delivering the message today. But give this. God is calling us back to rebuild his temple. God is calling us back to repair our hearts. God is calling us to repair everything that we lost. The one time we have, and we lost it for somehow. Many of you prophesy it before. Many of you pray for somebody and they automatically they go healing. You pray for somebody and automatically they, will, they was delivered from many oppressions and depressions. God is calling us back one more time and he will be able to use us. As long as we build the altar, as long as we get serious with God, as long as we have the journey, as long as we be honest and real before God. I know God, I've I been a little in, uh, lazy, I mean, I've been a little, uh, in, I don't want to come to your house, I know, but let me come back again. I know that we, we have uh, um, our age sometimes, but that's not an excuse. You, you ever see on Facebook, right? You see people like with 90 years old, or maybe 100, they started like, that's the music of the world. They started dun, 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 cha, 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 a little bit, right? But in the end, they're 100 years old. So why, when we come into the house of the Lord, it's so difficult to praise the Lord. I'm like, okay, if it is young, young folks, 100 years old, they are cha, 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 and we are in the 20s or the 40s, why well, we cannot praise and worship the Lord. I don't know. That's what I see. But yeah, take this to the heart. Can we stand? Let me pray for you. Lord, we thank you for this message. Let us open our heart, our mind, our soul, our brains to receive it. If we don't take everything from the message, let it this be placed in our hearts. Hope is to get serious with you one more time, O oh Lord. Hope is, O oh Lord, to build an altar for us one more time. Help us, O oh Lord, to have the journey with you one more time, O oh Lord. Help us, O oh Lord, to walk honest before you and be real with you, O oh Lord. That's my prayer for my brothers and sisters, O oh Father. O oh Holy Spirit, touch us, O oh Lord. Touch us the way that only you can touch. Touch your people this morning. Young people, children, young adults. And seniors in every age, oh Lord, touch this, oh Father. Bring this to your house with the open heart to praise you and help us, oh Lord, to bring our world together. And when we bring that world together, we can praise you and worship you in one sound, one mind, one accord, oh Lord. Touch your people, Holy Spirit. Touch and pray there, there he is. If you're not there yet, yeah, he will. This open your heart and he will work with you. He, he don't force you for 
to do something that you don't want to do. But Lord, please touch my brothers and sisters and touch me, oh Lord, to be, be the same way too. This prayer is for me as well, oh Father. So we thank you for what you do today. We thank you for all this worship that go from this building, oh Lord. And we thank you for all those that are watching for the streaming, oh Lord. They, if they are dealing with infirmities or whatever, oppressions or depressions, we pray for them that they will be healed and delivered in Jesus' name. And so we praise you, Lord, and we thank you. Amen and amen. So, God bless you. Have a great holiday. Everything that you do and we do, don't always remember that God is with you. If you have the opportunity in these parties that we be having and you have time to uh, encourage somebody of your family members, please do. And if, if you have a word for somebody in your family, deliver the word. But let's uh, have a little wisdom to how to uh, minister to our family members. So my prayer is that God will use you every, wherever you go, and God will bless you. Be blessed in Jesus' name. And you are dismissed.